Hello everyone, this is Gail, and today I'm going to do something that I've been wanting to do for a while, but to be perfectly honest, I've been very intimidated by this technique. Uh, it's something that I learned from Donna Cato, and it involves paint on polymer clay, and I'm not really great with paint. So... I think I may substitute some other materials other than what Donna did. Donna used mainly just paint on hers. I have a problem with some acrylic paints that just don't seem to dry on polymer clay. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But I wanted to show you some things. I've got, you notice I've got like five squares here. These are two inch squares of black clay. This is Primo, rolled out to the uh, thickest setting of my pasta machine. And I'm going to put a different surface on each one of these. I don't know if I'll do all five. Um, we only need three for this project, but I thought I would just keep going and see what looked best together. Doesn't have to be perfectly square, but I'm just going to trim it just because I just stretched it a little bit. So we're going to start with this one. And I think what I'm going to do with this one is use, um, looking for my water spritzer. That's the one thing that seems to always walk around here. Moved it up, up high. My daughter always accuses me of never looking, never looking up. But this is uh, a Lisa Pavelka stamp called Love Letter. And I like this. Uh, it's got looks like it's got a little bit of um, something on it. I'm not sure. Whatever I used this for the last time, so I'm just going to spritz it with a little bit of water. And I'm going to use one of my stamp cleaners. You can also spray the chamois. Probably need a little, a little more spray than that. I've got my big sprayer. And I'm just going to kind of wipe this off because I don't want this to get on my black clay. One of the problems with some of these deeply etched stamps is that clay will get down between between, you know, down in the grooves and you really don't want that. Let me just get a paper towel to dry that off. I'll need one later anyway. Actually, I don't need to dry it off because I'm going to use that water to keep it from sticking. But I'm just going to lay it over my black clay and I'm just going to press down and roll it once. And you see there's the handwriting. Got a little stretched, but you can always straighten it out. Now what I'm going to do with this, is I'm going to take some gold paint. I'll use my little pouncer brush. I want to get this gold paint down in there. And I'm going to use this Liquitex Iridescent Rich Gold. just going to pounce it down in there. I want to make sure it gets down into this little, down into the letters because I want that to be gold. Now this one I am doing the way Donna did. Yeah. 
she did this pouncing effect and it doesn't matter that it's getting on the outside because you're going to cover that up with something else but we at least want the writing to be gold what I like about pouncing it like this is you don't have to pour paint out into a paint palette you can just take it directly from the tube now we're going to need to let this dry so I'll go, probably go on to another finish and then come back and work on this one again. Matter of fact, as long as I'm using paint, I may have to do that anyway. If nothing else, this is very relaxing. I can sit here and pounce all day. Maybe that's why people like to stencil. Because that's what this is, is a stencil brush. And I don't know how long it's going to take this paint to dry. Because again, I did not do a test beforehand because I really don't have the time. If I took the time to do the test, then I wouldn't have time to do my video. Nobody told me being retired, you would be this busy. So I'm going to put this aside. Oops, I just, not that I'll probably use that piece, but you never know gouged it with my finger. But I'm going to put this aside and let it dry while I work on something else. Set it here on this piece of plastic and set it aside. Okay, so and of course I didn't get a uh, glass of water, which I need for my paint, but I will just cover it with a wet wipe to keep it moist and then I will wash it later. Anybody ever tried that? Just keeping it wet. You just don't want it to dry. All right, so let's go to another another technique. And that would be um, either a stencil or I'm going to use a silk screen. And I'm going to use this Sculpey silk screen because I really like it. I like the lines. You put the shiny side down and just burnish it on with your finger. Except I didn't get it all on the square. There we go. Well, I'm still off center. I don't know what it is with me trying to get this on in there. Now I'm just going to do this. Now Donna, I believe you did use paint on this, but I think I'm going to use Perfect Pearls. And I'm going to use a two-tone. Let me get my Perfect Pearls out. Um, 
one of the things I'm going to do is use some metal leaf, and I'm going to use the green leaf. So I believe I'm going to use the perfect gold and forever green. Yes, forever green. I'm going to use that on here. It's going to be mainly gold. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tap a little bit on my finger, tap it off in the cap, and then just rub. And I'm going to just do this all over. Then I'm going to take the green, I'm going to do the same thing. This way it's not just all gold. I don't, I'm not a gold person. I do more silver. Whoops. Well, I got plenty of green there. And just keep layering until you've got it the way you think you're going to want it. on before you sneeze because if you sneeze this stuff is going everywhere and I pulled out an extra wet wipe a little while ago so I think I'll use that to clean off my fingers clean off my work surface get this green perfect pearl off and I'm going to pull that up and I'm actually going to use the wet wipe to wipe off my silk screen just be gentle you don't want to damage the silk screen these Sculpey silk screens are pretty durable And if you want, you can take them and rinse them off in the sink when you're finished. But since this was a powder instead of paint, I don't think you'll have that problem. So there's another finish that I have. And I'm going to put that on that same piece of plastic just so I can trans move them all at one time. So let's do another one. Let's do uh, let's do the green leaf. Now this is a variegated leaf, but the main color is green. Just carefully lift the paper till you get to the leaf. These are the ones I've used. I'm not going to take it up off of the paper. I'm going to leave it laying right where it is. There, can you see the green? And what I'm going to do is just lay this on the green leaf, press it down, and then pick it up. And it, the leaf is going to stick. There you go. Can you see that better? And then you can just close this back up. let it see it's 
very, very thin, so you've got to be careful. But I let, I let this get crooked. And if I don't bring it over, it's going to crack where I close the... Oh, I'll just leave that there. So I see a little place here that didn't work. But what we're going to do is crackle this. So this is rolled out to the number one setting of the pasta machine. Actually, I can take that little piece probably what it was telling me that I was going to need it. And just press it on the raw clay and it'll stick and cover up all the little spots that you didn't catch. And I will get a brush. my wet wipe to pick get that up. What would we do before wet wipes? Goodness. Alright, now what I'm going to do is crackle this. So I've got it on a number one setting. Um, actually, I'm going to put a stamp on it first. And I wanted a, a leaf stamp which I'm sure I have, but I didn't find one, so I think I'm going to use, this is a Christy Friesen stamp in the meadow, and yes, I have so many stamps. I think I'm going to use this one because it's got a pretty flower. I like that flower, so I'm going to put that on here, and I'm going to roll this first. Make sure it's got a depression. Actually, I don't think I'm going to do anything with that. I was going to crackle it, but I really like the way this looks. I think I'm going to leave that. It doesn't need to be crackled because the differences in the color with the green and the gold kind of takes care of that. So, okay, let's see. What else can I do? Um, let's do another stamp. Um, I won't use the same one. I'll use Lisa Pavelka's Cludel stamp. This has got to be my favorite. And let me see what part I want on here. I don't think I want the little pinwheels. But I do kind of like this right here. I'm just going to do that. And you can do this with any stamp, any paint, whatever it is you want to use, you can use anything. And that is kind of stuck down there. And what I'm going to do is use this uh, red oxide paint. This is also an acrylic. And this I'm going to pounce with my finger. Let me get a little piece of patty paper. See how that picks up just the, the top of the stamp? Again, this is Liquitex acrylic paint. I don't think I pressed that down enough. No, I didn't. I didn't think I did. I 
reason I'm dabbing this off, if you tap, dab, go like this, you'll notice there's a little point of paint that comes down, and that's going to go right down into your texture. So I do this just to wipe off that little point. But this red will go real well with the green. I didn't have a pretty green acrylic paint. So this is another one that's going to have to dry, but maybe I can go back to my gold one. Whoops. It's not really dry, but maybe it's dry enough. I'm going to use the same red oxide paint and do the same thing, but this time when I do it, it's going to be over the gold that's down in the re recessed places. I don't think I have a green acrylic paint, but I like this dappled look. And no, the gold is not dry. But the only part I'm touching is the one that I'm adding the green, to, the red to anyway. Actually, I want to put a different color on there. Um, let me go. First, I'm going to go get me a glass of water to put my paintbrush in. And I'm going to look for a green paint and see. Oh, you know what I could do? Never mind. My brain is going off on a tangent. Let me go do that, and then I'll be back. I did find a green. This is uh, Windsor and Newton. This is an olive green. But that might give me the color that I need. It's the only green acrylic paint I have other than the, just the regular craft paints, which I don't know how they mix with these. But I'm going to just top, go over the red. I may have to let it dry a little bit more. Yeah, the green is not going on because the red is so wet. So this is going to have to go be put aside. To dry. And this is one reason I haven't done this particular technique before because it does take so long and you know I'm, I'm an instant gratification kind of person and if I leave that there not just as sure as anything I'll stick something in it so let's do this one and I think what I'm going to do on this one is I'll put my leaf away is I'm going to use some gold leaf. Everything else has texture to it. So I'm going to use some gold leaf. And this I will crackle. But it's always good to have some gold leaf on hand. Even if you don't use it, it's nice to have. So let me see how far down I have to go. Oh, it's right there. where it's stuck to the paper. And I'm just going to put this down there. It's 
Sorry you couldn't see that. I just laid it down on top of the gold leaf. And let me move it back onto the paper. I've got all kinds of leaves. I know. I guess this is one time when you don't say leaves. Let me get my brush. Where did I? there that didn't get covered. Just take your scraps and stick them on there and it takes care of it. Now like I said on the other one before I changed my mind, this is rolled out on a number one setting on my pasta machine or the thickest setting of my pasta machine. I'm going to take it and roll it through at a number two which is not a whole lot thinner, but it does get thinner. So let me just do that real quick. You can see how it started to crackle a little bit. Now I'm going to take it this way, turn it around, and I'm going to go down to a number three. And now I have a really nice piece of crackled clay. Now this being on a number three setting of the pasta machine, you may want to back it on some black clay so it will be the same thickness as the other pieces. Because the other pieces are all, remember, they're all rolled out at the thickest setting. So I'm going to turn the camera off while I, excuse me, while I condition this to make another thin sheet of clay. I'll be right back. Okay, so I rolled this out also at a number three. I'm going to pick this up and put on it. And I'm going to trim this. And I'm going to put it back on the thickest setting of my pasta machine and I'm going to roll it through this way. You just have to look at it and see which way needs to be crackled more. And this will put it so now we have a nice piece of crackle. Even if we just use a piece of it, it's nice to have this in your stash for you to use. Now because I need to, actually I don't need to let this one dry, and I don't need to let this one dry, but I do need these to dry, and I really need something other than what I've got. So I'm going to turn the camera off and let these dry, and then I will be back. While I'm waiting for this red and gold to dry, I decided to do another one. And I think my problem with the with it drying is that there's the paint is too thick. So I decided to do another one. And as I'm doing it, I'm going over it just to wipe off that surface. It doesn't have to be totally wiped off. But that way the paint isn't so thick. I think that might be the problem. It's just way too thick. I told you I didn't do well with paint and polymer clay.
Okay, I think that's covered enough. Now let me wipe off that. You see, I'm just wiping off what's on the surface. A little of it is staying on there, but what's on there that I paint started with is already dried. So that's probably what I needed to do. So, instead of using the red like I did on the other one, I'm going to use green. And since the gold is down inside, is the only one we're interested in, I'm not going to wait for this to dry. And let's see how the green does. Let me get enough down here where I can just dab on here with my finger. And with that little bit of gold that's on the top, it really brings out this green. Of course, this plastic isn't the best paper to use. you're trying to work on something like this. But I like that green. What do you think? I think it'll go with this piece really well. I really like that. And I, since I've got the green here on my paper, I believe this is dry now, I'm going to just tap this randomly with some green. Just so it's not solid red. And we'll see which one turns out the best. Okay, so now back to drying time. I will be back when this is dry and we'll put together this pendant. Okay, it looks like all of our, all of my pieces are dry. And uh, I dabbed a little green on the red. It's fuzz, I thought it was cat hair. I was wondering because the cats don't come in this room and the green. So what I need to do now is select thing. I know I'm going to use this. Matter of fact, I, this is going to be my main color because I really like this and I think I'm going to have that side, this side here in as my main design. And I don't know, this one I need to cut in half because it's a round design and I'm going to turn it over only because the bottom side, when you, I don't know if you know this, when you cut down on your clay, the top piece rounds just a little bit but the bottom is very sharp. So I think I'm going to put this one like right there. Let me trim this black off here. And I'm going to put Let me see how that looks. See how that looks. I think I like the way this one looks better. I'm going to create a sharp edge, which I'll cut this here, but then I'm going to turn it over the other way to do the side. So that it'll be sharp and I'm going to set that there.
and I want it to fit in my gold leaf somewhere so I may just cut a square or a rectangle That might be too wide. Let me cut that in half. You just kind of have to play until it looks good to you. Doesn't matter what other people think. Only matters what you think. But I'm just wondering if that's, you're losing some of the gold leaf. So why don't I do this? I know what I'll do. I'll cut this side off. To make that more rectangular. Tucker! Sorry, my dog's into the cat food. Let me go get him. Hold on. Sorry about that, my, my little monster dog. I may just set that up in there. You see what I've pretty much done is made a mosaic. And I'm going to save these pieces because I will certainly use these in other designs. All right, now I need a template. Now, I know Sculpey makes templates. Um, Melanie Muir makes templates. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the people that make templates. But anyway, I found a, per, a place online. Actually, I got it from Sandy Huntress. She was telling us about it. It's, a, it's Anna... Uh, Belchi, B-E-L-C-H-I, and she has some free templates, and they are all different sizes and shapes, and I went ahead and printed them, but I've printed those on regular paper. This one is called Gropius, <coughs> and I printed this one on cardstock, so it's a little bit larger, and what I'm going to do is just try to Well, let's see, since that is upside down, let's see, I have to find one that will fit, or I may have to do another one. I had this cut out with my, um, my scan and cut, which I absolutely love, but I'm not getting much, I want to get much of that, so let me see. But this is not, if it hangs the way it's made, it's not going to work. I could do this one. I just don't know. This is the hardest part, is fix it, finding the shape you want. That may not even work. Let me see. I have some other templates. I have some cutting edge templates. And this is the stamen. Oh, those are the cutouts. I don't think this is the shape that I want. I don't want a plain shape like this. So don't think I'll use that one. I've got a few more of his. 
I've got the long stamen. But again, it, it's a, or, well, that's not bad. If I could get, if I could exchange this and this, cut this side straight. Sorry, I, I'm so undecisive, but I really... want to use this in my design. If I use this one, it kind of defeats the purpose of having the writing. So I don't think that one's going to work either. Let me see what else I've got. Let me look through my templates and see what I was planning on using this one. And maybe now that I've moved it around, I can use this one. Let me try it. Let me do. That's right, pretty. I'm going to have to mark that one just because there's so many on here. If I try any more, that one seems to work. If I could get this shape maybe a little bit lot that's too big. I well, maybe not. Depends on what you want to do with it. The thing I like about these is she's got mirror images. Like these two are opposite. Those two are opposite. If I do that one, I've got four. That's the one I marked, didn't I? So I seem to like that shape, but I think that one's a little big. I'm going to try that one. Now because this is not on sticky paper, it's going to be difficult to cut with anything other than a uh, craft knife. So I'm just going to very carefully Follow the inside of my design. Just don't cut into it, into your template. Let's see what this one looks like. Let's see, I've pulled this. Now I've got all of this I can use on another design. I've got this that can go in another design. I have this one that can go in another design. And I only used a small piece of the gold leaf. So I have plenty of that left. But I kind of like that. I'm 
I'm going to lay that on a piece of patty paper. Kind of looks like a shield, doesn't it? And put another piece over top of it. And I'm going to burnish it. I do have a burnisher somewhere. Have one of these burnishers. It works really well to get this all melded together. it a little on the edge over here. So I'm going to go over it again with my craft knife because I, when I started burnishing I burnished a little hard and I want to keep these edges crisp because we're not finished yet. So you can see these little pieces that where I pushed it out when I was burnishing it. And I didn't want those little pieces there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake this for about 30 minutes because it will go in the oven again but I'm going to bake this for 30 minutes and then we'll come back and finish it well I guess you can see let me move my scraps out of the way I decided while this was baking I would go ahead and make some others using bits and pieces of the of the uh, sheets that I already had. I made some earring shapes. I just did all kinds of things. I had a good time. But when I came back to do this, this uh, cool this when it cooled off it buckled and I need to put this back in the oven in order to flatten it out. So I'm not going to do that just yet. So I'll take one of these smaller ones, maybe one of these hearts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of black clay that's a little bit larger than the piece I'm using. And this is not a flexible blade. Let me get a flexible blade. Actually, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to go ahead and cut some strips. So since I just cut this, I know that's straight. So I'm going to cut a strip... Oh, maybe an eighth of an inch wide. First off, I need some liquid clay or bacon bond on here. And somehow my table got turned around backwards, which doesn't surprise me. I do all kinds of weird things when I'm working. But I'm going to use just a dot of Kato liquid clay. See, I just put just a little tiny bit on my finger 
and I'm going to rub it here on the back. It doesn't have to be a thick layer. It can be, this is very thin. It's so thin it's rather tacky. And then I'll push this down. Now that's going to help this adhere when it bakes. And I guess I used my paper towel. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this little thin strip Oh, actually, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to take a thicker strip. I will get this in a minute. It's the only thing about me taking a break is that I forget things that I'm doing. And I'm going to bend that strip around my shape. I'm going to go ahead and come up a little bit because it wasn't long enough to go all the way to the center and it needs to go in up to the center. And since it didn't go all the way, I'm going to have to stick another piece in there. So I need to cut away enough to put another piece in there that will fit flush. Must not have cut that all the way through. There we go. So now I'm going to cut another piece. And it doesn't matter the width because we're going to be trimming this again. But let me find my little tool here that I like to use. I'll use this one since it's got a blunt edge instead of a sharp edge. I don't want all that little, all those little pieces stuck in there. So I believe this will fit in there. There we go. And I'm going to wrap this around. I know it's probably hard for you to see black on black. But I'm going to slice this even with this side. And take that little piece off. And then bring this all the way down. Now this is going to be cut off. But you know, we don't have to worry about that just yet. Um, this is when you want to smooth it out. Get rid of your fingerprints. Smooth these seams. Let me see if this will smooth the seam. That's where I gouged it with my fingernail, which I do quite often. I'm going to use this to smooth this seam. This heart, if you're interested, it's from, uh, it's a Sculpey. Let's see, where is my heart? It's, it came, it's, these are dated 2001, if it shows you how old they are. But this is some uh, templates that Sculpey had at one time. I don't know if they still have them, but they were called shapelets. And let me get something else to smooth this a little bit. Just use something flat. And just smooth it out. And 
I'm kind of smearing, which is a technical term, which pretty much means what I'm doing is pushing that black up against the hard piece, the baked piece. And then I'm going to take my flexible blade, or well, actually the, what I'm going to do first is put it on a piece of patty paper so I can turn it around. I'm going to take my fixed blade and I'm going to decide, that hasn't been pushed up yet, I'm going to decide the width that I want my trim around this to be. Now, since this one's kind of small, I can afford to put a larger rim around it. So I'm going to, actually maybe what I should do is bring this in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Let me move things out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm going to cut between, I'm going to cut... Oh, maybe an, I'm going to stick with that eighth of an inch. I'm going to make that cut. And I'm cutting through both thicknesses. And I'm going to make this cut. A little piece of gold on there. I'll try to make this. the same width. Those were the only two straight surfaces. So now I'm going to take a round blade and I'm going to just do this gradually because I don't want to cut too much. It's hard to gauge with a round blade. So I'm just going to cut around just a little at a time. Just smooth it out this way. Let me go over to this side. Uh, can't see very well, but that's another advantage of only taking a little off at a time. Let me see if I can see it better on this side. Yeah. And I'm just doing the round part gradually. And here comes my fur baby. He must need to go outside. I'm going to do a video of him one day because he is so cute. Just taking your, my blade to kind of even up what I've cut. Cut that piece off. And from here on out, I'm going to have to use my my exacto knife in order to get in this pointed part of the heart. As you can see, I didn't do it even, but that's okay. I'm going to just pull that out. Then I can even this up here. This is a little bit too thick. And then take my fingers around it a little bit. You can use your blade if you want. I, I like to get my fingers in my work. And down here there's a little bit too much of a point. I'm just going to bring this in a little bit. 
on each side. That looks much better. And I'm going to trim this a little bit because I didn't, I trimmed the other sides a little bit smaller than that. But there's the finished piece here. And what I will do, actually this is already the right width. I'm going to roll this out a little bit thinner. I'm not going to bother putting it in the pasta machine. I'm just going to use my roller. And I'm just going to cut a piece. Maybe about that wide. Let me trim up these edges. And I'm going to get a skewer, just a wooden skewer, which are not in my workstation. So let me get one out of the drawer. I'm just going to break this off because I don't need a great big long one. I'm going to take this and wrap it around the skewer. I'm going to trim this off just a little bit because I want to put my little butterfly on here, which is sort of my symbol. And I'm going to take this and place it on the back. And I'm going to use my little tool here to make sure it comes into contact. Oh, and actually, what I ought to do while I'm here, I have one of these skid prevention things. I meant to do this before I put the, the bail on, but I'm just going to press this into this to give it some texture and even put it on there. It won't mash up my butterfly. I'll just add a little bit there too so that the back looks a little bit better. And if you want, you can even do it around the edges here. And something firm like this would help you get your edges even and flat anyway. So let's put a little bit of texture on it. That way I don't have to worry about getting fingerprints off. Now I do feel over here where the edge came up just a little bit. There you go. I'm going to bake this in the oven for an hour. I'm going to plate and go bake it face down so that this doesn't get messed up. I already messed up the the texture. But I'm going to bake this for an hour and then that we're going to have a finished pendant. So I hope you like that. Come back again soon for another polymer clay video. Thanks. Bye-bye.